We're continuing uh, the Kabbalah quiz, questions 26 to 30. So, question 26. What is the purpose of the world according to Kabbalah? The purpose of the world according to Kabbalah is to uh, bring the world back to full unity. Um, God created a world which means he creates separation between himself and the rest of existence because God is technically everywhere. So he, he uh, created empty space for us to be able to exist and he wants this empty space to uh, allow itself to be filled by him again. Uh, and uh, how is this happening? It's by uh, through the tools that he gave us uh, that I taught in the Torah uh, which is the mitzvot, um, the, the mitzvot and the, um, the commandments and the learning of Torah are the tools necessary for us to uh, transform the world and transform ourselves if we learn, do it and learn it the right way, and the right way, and uh, in this case the world becomes one again with God. Um, the the basic kavana, the basic meditation that is done before every action that is done by a mekubal, by a kabbalist is leshem yichud kuchab rechush chinte bitcharu chemu chemu bitcharu yechad hashem yud kevi akem bichudah shelim b'shem kol yisrael. I um, take upon myself to unite the God and the Shechina, which is God and His divine presence, which is uh, basically w the manifestation of God on earth and the goal is that he should be as manifested on earth that he is in heaven as known as glorious and uh, as that we should all be aware but we are the one who have to let that happen in our brain and hearts and that's why how we bring him one that's why the whole uh, Jewish anthem the Jewish uh, mantra is Shema Yisrael Hashem Yukinu Hashem Echad. The goal is uh, God and His name, which is God in heaven and His name down on earth, should be one. There's no differences. Uh, it's one of the reasons why we don't, pro we don't pronounce the name of God, Yud Kei Vav Kei, in, in, until Moshiach comes, because we don't, He's not really revealed on that level yet, and therefore it is inappropriate to say His name. Um, okay, question number, so the, the, like we said, the purpose of the world is to become one, unity, unity on earth, unity in heaven, unity between all human beings, unity between nature, um, animals, human beings, and angels, and God. Um, number 27, what is Ruach HaKodesh? Ruach HaKodesh is usually translates as divine inspiration. Ruach HaKodesh um, and divine inspiration is basically a lower form of prophecy, um, but there are many levels in Ruach HaKodesh, different opinions on how many levels. Um, some say the three levels, but basically Ruach HaKodesh on the simplest level is intuition uh, that comes from one's soul. Um, because it's connected to spirituality or to reality on a high level. Um, so it can be intuition, it can be on a higher level than that um, uh, clarity, uh, clarity and a clear, clear understanding of, of something, of situation, uh, of what's supposed to happen in reality or the understanding of reality or the understanding of Torah um, and when one goes on the ladder of Ruach HaKodesh eventually we achieve the level of Nevua which is actual prophecy and uh, but that's when it's clear 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 that's a prophecy from God um, and, um, and and we usually have dreams or vision Ruach HaKodesh doesn't usually require a uh, vision to be called Ruach HaKodesh, but it's usually a clear understanding that you know comes from your soul or from God um, and into you. Um, number 28. How many spheros are there? What is their name and what is a sphera? So how many spheros 
are there. There are really ten spheres. There is a hidden one called Da'as, which is called, called the eleventh sphere. But there, it's only not. It's not a real sphere, so to speak. Um, there are basically ten spheres. The God created the world with ten energies. Um, or ten generators, if we can say so. Every sphera is um, like a machine, a spiritual machine that takes the divine energy, the divine reality, the divine existence, and uh, make it transform it into a lower form, uh, pass it down to the next gener the generator, to the next level, in order to. Uh, no, to allow another existence to happen, um, so it's like uh, it's, it's like going, looking through sunglasses uh, or through filters. Um, every sphere is a filter of light. Every sphere is, is enables another dimension, another reality. We know that today in science it says there are there are ten dimensions. So same thing, there are ten sayings. Is the reason we have ten fingers, the reason are ten commandments, the reason there are ten plagues, the reason why every human has ten power, uh, ten powers, and ten tests. Um, so, what are the names of the spheres? So, starting from the highest to the lowest, um, there is Keser, which is the crown. Then there is Chokma, which means wisdom. Um, there is Bina, which means understanding. Then this chesed, which is expansion, giving, love. Um, then this gvura, which is limitation, strength, boundaries. Uh, then this tiferes, which is harmony, truth. Uh, then this netzach, which is um, victory, eternity. Then this uh, hod, which is glory or beauty um, concealed beauty you could say so but uh, then there is Yesod which is foundation connection communication um, transparency and then there is Malchus which is the crown which is the kingdom royalty um, and they're all interconnected and they all work with each other and the goal is to create a world uh, the w the way to create unity is to unite the top one, the Kesser, the crown, to the bottom one, which is royalty. Obviously, it's like you put the crown on something royal, royal, and um, only a king can have a crown. Therefore, this is our work to bring the crown of heaven of God down to earth, where, and and create that royalty. Um, so you have to think of those ten spheres as ten steps. Ten, um, ten little. Trying to see if I have a picture here. That would have been easier to uh, explain it. And visualization is always good. One second. If I can find it right away. Nope, I couldn't find it here, so I'm going to show you um, this. This is the ten spheres. Um, this is how it looks. So we want to bring the crown all the way down to the earth, which is the bottom. So this is like a electric wires where everything is interconnected. Um, and this is basically the DNA of creation. Um, the more we understand the spheres, the more we understand everything that exists in creation. Um, I, from physical to spiritual. Then, and that's why most of the Kabbalahs dis discuss how the spheres work. And if you want to learn the book of Kabbalah or the Zohar, everything that it discusses, even in codes, because every word corresponds to a sphere. If you want to try to understand that, there's a book called Share Ora by Rabbi Gita Kila, Italian. Kabbalist uh, student of Rabbi Avram Abu Lafia, and he discussed the connections, um, the different levels, and how every word in the Torah really corresponds to a sphera. And everything we're reading really is a code of how every, all energies are interconnected. 
Okay, then there is question 29, which is how uh, many types of angels are there? So, according to the Rambam, there are 10 types of angels um, and 10 categories. Uh, I'm not going to mention them there. You can check. He lists them, I believe, in Yesodia Torah. Let me see if I can find it right away. If I can find it right away, now we'll read it. Otherwise, uh, yep, yeah, I think I know that's the seven names of God. Mm. So here, so the every the lowest level, interestingly, are called Ishim, which is man uh, in the plural form. So. Uh, because they are the most, the closest to men, and therefore, they, uh, in a way, resemble, on many levels, men. Um, so I can, I can find it. Let's try. Mm, no, I know it's it's uh, somewhere there in the Yesodei Torah, the Rambam Mishneh Torah. And you're gonna find there the list of the names of the ten different levels of angels. So we, um, the reason they have different names is because they all correspond to different levels. The reason they are ten obviously correspond to the fact that they are ten spheres, like we just spoke about before. And um, and uh, we used to in the times of the temple and and before. Um, and few individuals after used to, uh, by knowing the name of the angels or what type of angels they are, one knows how to communicate with them and call them. There's a book called Share uh, uh, Sefer Raziel Hamalach, which is the angel who taught to Adam Arishon, the first man, how to um, call, call any angels. By its right name, and therefore pushing the angel to do something for oneself. Um, yeah. Okay. I always get frustrated when I don't find it right away. I guess um, I will look into it, and next time I'll let you know exactly where it is, so that you can look at it uh, yourself. Okay. I'm giving up. Yeah, no, I don't, don't have it. I don't have it right away. Okay, next thing is, um, what's an angel and do they have free will? Um, an angel is like a spiritual robot, um, and they all have a mission, like we do also all have a mission, but their mission is, meaning they live in the world of truth, therefore they know exactly what's happening, and they know they are only limited to how much they were power. They were given their angels who exist for just a few seconds, and their angels who exist for uh, thousands of years. Uh, there's something called archangels, the higher angels with more responsibilities than others. Um, but every angel, as far as I remember, is only assigned to one mission at a time, at least. Um, and uh, an angel is a kind of energy, uh, intelligent energy that. Uh, make things happen in this world um, uh, but there's angels for everything so we're, we're, it says for every blade of grass there's an angel so an angel is that spiritual energy behind something one shouldn't think of those things with wings um, it, some angels have wings in the spiritual world and the wings represent a, sp a spiritual ability to go from one place to another, um, or to ascend, um, or fly, but again, there's no real flying in the spiritual world, uh, um, because it's spiritual. Um, so, they, um, they, so do they have free will? Some angels have free will, um, it's not correct exactly, there's a big debate. Some say they don't have free will, meaning they just do what they're told, and some say they are free will. And the proofs of that are that they have the Gemara that speaks about Gabriel being punished for what he did, and different. There's a few places in 
I think even in no, I think it's in the well, in the midrash for sure. But in the Gemara, you have a few places where angels are punished for what they did, um, and you're not punished obviously if you don't have free will. So, what does that really mean? Uh, you have to look deeper into into the Gemara. And uh, but the, the Talmud basically wants to say that angels live in the world of truth. So when you live in the world of truth, why would you? If you know you put your hand in the fire, then you don't have. Um, if you if you know the feeling that w- or what will happen when you put your hand in the fire, you would not put your hand in the fire. That's why nobody does it. But you still have the ability to do it, but you're not crazy enough to do it. So that's gonna be the idea of the angel. Angel sees everything. They know God. They see God. They see the reality that they see in the spiritual world, and therefore, for them, there's absolutely no reason to change anything because everything is perfect, uh, and they they do what they're created for. So. There is a level of free choice, but it's extremely limited. It is similar to what we said, that when Moshiach is going to come and God is going to be revealed all over the earth, there will not be really real, any real free choice. That's why there will be no more really reward for mitzvot um, for Olam Abba because because we know how everything works. You do a mitzvah, you see everything that happens, then you lose, you lose your free choice, basically. And uh, we shall continue uh, with other questions next time.